So welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Kenny, and here we are down in Florida. We've been here for about two to three weeks now, and um, yeah, it's it's been a great, amazing time down here. Uh, we've been doing a lot of trails and a lot of stuff, and we got some content that we're going to be rolling out, and this is actually one of them that we're going to be doing. So, you know, one of the things that we're getting a lot of questions on when we're releasing our next video, that's actually this video here. Um, weird hearing all the noises out here during the day usually you hear these kind of noises at night it's kind of cool anyways um so we've just been super busy with work and i know a lot of you guys want me to do more and more of this that's, that's great i hope every one of you guys continue to follow me and continue to support me through this this uh, journey as we're going through this um but ultimately i do have stuff my work um my work is nice enough that i am able to travel and do this kind of stuff so that's like what's a really good plus to this mosquitoes are out today holy crap um but yeah like that's what makes this amazing is is i have a job that allows me to be able to travel allows me to be able to do this kind of stuff and as i continue to go down this path you know we will continue to work through this chest out new things do more videos like this and bring you guys content as we travel out throughout the United States. So, yeah. So this this episode here, we're actually going to be talking a little bit about what do you take when you overland? What are some of the requirements you guys feel like you need in order to do that? I'm just going to talk about a few of the items that I keep in my rig at all times. Um, just because of experience I've had when I've been trailing. So let's talk about a little bit about some of the, some of the stuff. Um, some of the stuff is removable from the Bronco so we can take it in the, the trail hawk or one of the other rigs that we decide to go in whether we have a buddy or something to go with us um, but some of it is actually affixed to the Bronco and I know a lot of people are going to say you know some of this stuff's not really required you're right it doesn't really require it but we feel a little bit more comfortable having that stuff so yeah it's all a matter of preference so let's start talking about it so as you guys know I am a huge fan of these lights. These are the, the last fit lights um, that we got uh, that actually sponsored the video. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, make sure you guys check out up in the upper right hand corner. We'll throw the link up there for you as well as in our playlist for Bronco Sport um, modifications. Um, but that's mainly what I focused my Bronco Sport on is I wanted to take a whole bunch of um, lights, add it to it because if you can't see at night and you're trailing, you get stuck out in the middle of nowhere, it makes it very difficult. And as you can see this from this video, my brother showed um, how much brighter these lights are compared to the factory headlights. So yeah, we have these headlights here. We have these lights here, which are the rough country pod lights. These mainly light up the, the center section of everything as well as our standard OEM lights. We have the Lost Fit lights. These are more geared towards the ditch so that it shows more uh, outside. Okay, so we might be cutting this video short. That was a big crack of lightning I just saw. So, yeah. Nice thing about this is you just wait five minutes and come back and you can continue to do your video. But we'll keep an eye on it. Um, we got some pretty dark clouds coming in, so yeah, well, let's just continue to talk a little bit about this. But um, mainly for me, I wanted the lights. I wanted to be able to see at night. If I was out trailing at night and we got caught caught out there and we weren't able to make it back to camp or something in time, I wanted us to be able to see when we got back. So check it out. Osfit lights for the ditch. And then we got the, the bar light up here that helps kind of just fill in all the gaps. And we got the floodlight. Uh, it floods out and basically kind of pans out everywhere it goes. And then, of course, we got the side lights. These side lights help out a lot because they actually spot to the side out this way, as you guys can see from some of the video. Um, and it's getting ready to start raining. I can feel some of the rain. So we'll kind of wrap this up for a second. We will come back as soon as the, the storm passes and gets through this. But as you saw in the other video, we did have these pod lights hooked up. They work really good when you're trailing at night, going through the trails to see what's on the side. Um, that's more for our safety because when you're in an environment like this and you're just not familiar with it, which Florida, we're not really familiar with this. The reason we have these pod lights is, you know, for me, I feel a little more comfortable when we can see on the sides. 
um, because you're in you're in some of the wildlife's backyard. That that this is their home. So you don't want to be disrupting them too much, but you also want to respect respect them as well too, and not be disrupting disrupting them. So when you're trailing, make sure you guys take care of the trails, take clean up, always leave it better than you found it. But when it comes to seeing what's out there, I've always been a, a, a fan of making sure you know your surroundings, check your areas. When you set up tent, when you set up tent, uh, uh, your tent, your camp, whatever you guys are taking out there, make sure you guys are checking your surroundings. Um, you know, down here there is multiple poisonous snakes. Uh, we're not used to that up in Illinois, um, and I know there are some out west uh, that we've uh, done, and I've done enough research on some of these. Um, I can help help kind of identify some of them, but some of them blend so well you can't even see them. So make sure you guys be careful. Be careful of the wildlife. That's why we have these pod lights on the side. We want to be able to see what's on the side. You know, there are black bears down here, and I we haven't really seen any of this in this area here, but we have been told there are some around here. So, um, but that that's just where you just need to kind of understand your surroundings. And that's why it's very important I have these lights because I don't want to be caught in a situation where we can't see something, and then all of a sudden we roll up on a black bear or some sort of other animal um, that we're not familiar with. Um, and then mainly the things that we have here, we have a recovery gear. We have um, some straps. We bought these off of Amazon. Um, but basically we have some recovery straps. Um, inside here we got a small hammer. Uh, so we got, some, we got some gear here. We got some tools in this one as well. Um, and then we got the other recovery here. Got the big big strap here that hooks onto it. We also have some uh, shackles, um, some soft shackles that actually hook to it, as well as some hard shackles um, that if we needed to be able to tie to something, we could. Uh, and then, of course, what's the last thing on the rig is we have, well, actually, not the last thing, sorry. We have the recovery boards. Um, now, <laughs> recovery boards, I feel like, are a mixed thing. Sometimes they're a good thing. Sometimes they're not a good thing. Some people don't like them at all just because they feel like they, they don't work at all. They do work. They do help you out. I keep them around because it helps keep my base camp level. So if I'm just trailing with the Bronco and we have our tent and everything, or if I'm sleeping in the Bronco or we have put the rooftop tent back up there, which we're looking at some options, um, these here can be used for leveling. That's, what's not, that's what I like about them. That's kind of why I just keep them around. So... Um, but we did try to use them down in Maris, um, but because of the, the, the low clearance that I had on this side, I couldn't get them down there. So that's kind of where we ran into a problem. And then, of course, we have gas, an additional two, 2.5 gallons of fuel. So if we're trailing, we can uh, fuel up if we run low. Typically, our biggest thing is... When you go out trailing, make sure you got a full tank of gas, or at least somewhat of enough gas that you can make it through the trail and get back to wherever you need to and fuel back up. But in the event you can't, we always carry about two and a half gallons of gas with us, which with gas mileage, that's probably a really expensive move to keep those out there. So, um, yeah, where are you guys at with gas prices? I know us, it's, it's taking an impact. We haven't been able to do much. That's kind of why I'm working more because I really can't travel too much. So I'm trying to make an impact other places other than just trying to sit around and not really do anything. So um, spare tire too. These are all the things I keep on the Bronco at all times. And these are all the things I'll be building into the Trailhawk. So we have as well too. You know, always prepare for the worst so that you're never caught with a situation and I'm not saying that you're never going to be not caught with a situation you're always going to be caught with some sort of situation where you won't have something that you need and this where this is what it brings to the next thing you know when we were traveling down in southern Illinois and we went to um, Shawnee National Park and stayed there we were checking out some of the roads and some of the the backtrack trails there were more roads not really trails um, Illinois really doesn't have any public land to go do that stuff on besides that area um, but we went and into some stuff and we found a down tree now they have some pretty massive trees down there um, and one of the things I've been looking at is I, I've been looking at chainsaws so that I can try to get that my brother actually just recently got me this and I haven't had a chance to test it out but we are going to test it out and we're going to see how well it works um, but we he went and bought this basically it comes with three batteries and then you get the free tool. 
So you buy the three batteries, Home Depot's got it. I think it's like $199 or something like that. And then you get the free tool, which was like $150 that itself. So that was a huge savings. And that, you know, he helped me out a lot with that because he's seen me do with these trails. And, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate to have a supportive family like that. So, but yeah, we got the Ryobi 18 volt, 10 inch chainsaw. Now, I know it's not a massive chainsaw. I know it's not gonna cut down a whole tree, um, but in the event that we get into a pickle, like we were down to Shawnee National Park, it would it would have been enough for me to basically be able to cut that up a little bit and kind of take my toe strap, hook it to the front nudge bar, and we would have been able to pull that tree out of the way to kind of open traffic up for that road. That was actually a main road too. So that tree must have recently fell down because it was just, a, it was a paved road. It was a, it was a normally traveled, road and i'm pretty sure that just recently happened so that's another thing too is if when you guys set up camp if you guys are not aware of some of the trees if they look dead make sure you guys try to pick a different spot because you just don't know with some of these trees um humidity climate all that kind of stuff can change and uh my, bro my uncle was telling me about a story about when he was younger um when he went camping with his girls um there was a tree that actually fell right next to his camper and or it was actually not a tree, sorry, a branch. It was a pretty big one too. And it destroyed all their all their camping gear outside. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. But that's why you need to be really careful on some of that stuff and check your surroundings. Make sure you're not around any dead trees because those limbs and everything can fall, a tree can fall over. So you guys need to just practice safety when you're out there. But that's what this is gonna help us with is when we're trailing and we need to be able to cut up some firewood, we can use it for that. If we need to be able to cut a tree out of the way because a trail, because it came down recently and nobody in the DNR or um, anybody who's been, had never been out there and hasn't cleared it out yet, we can kind of help with that kind of stuff. And that's the great thing about overlanding is we're all in this community to help out and make these trails functional and fun for everybody because nobody, nobody likes getting stuck. Nobody likes having to cut up trees, but take the extra time, clear the path, make it enjoyable for everybody because when you pay it forward, it'll come back to you. Or, and final thing is we have first aid kit. So let's take a look at this. This first aid kit, I know it's small, um, but it's got all the basic stuff. It's got some garments, it's got some band-aids, it's got some rubbing alcohol. It's got pretty much everything we need to triage to get somebody safely to a hospital to get treated for any type of problems. Like I said, these mosquitoes are really bad. That's why I'm kind of swatting my ears and everything else. So I apologize. So if you plan on doing some off-grid camping like that, where you're going to be disconnected from society or from anything like that, and you have family that you want to be able to communicate with and do what you need to, you need to look into one of these. I know it's not on my list. It's not a priority because we don't go off-grid that often. But with our last communication that we did not have, Basically, when we went to Maris, um, we went down into the canyon. Amazing place. If you guys have not been there, make sure you guys check out a Mar uh, Maris Adventure Park down in Amarillo, Texas area. Um, they have some really great trails. Um, Dirk, we met him. He's the owner of the, of the park, and he is very helpful on learning some of these um, uh, lifestyle, uh, some of this lifestyle that you guys might be interested in. But when we went down into the canyon, we had no cell phone service. Um, two days. Two days, my wife did not hear from me. She was getting very paranoid. I probably should have went up on top of the canyon and at least uh, made some sort of communication. But during that time, we ran into a couple issues where the Bronco was um, struggling with a couple of the courses um, because they were intermediate. Um, but as we went out, I learned very quickly what I needed to do to correct that after talking to uh, Dirk. Um, and yeah, so satellite communicators, um, the device mainly, it's, it works off the Iridium network. The device is a little pricey. Um, I think this one here is about $300. Um, but then the plan, you can, your first three months, so you have to do a plan. Um, you pay for the first three months, and then after that, you can suspend the account. And that's typically what we do when we know we're not going to be off-grid um, in the areas that we don't have service. If we did plan on going somewhere, we, we weren't going to have that. I would turn the service back on. Typically, I do unlimited just so I have communication with uh, my wife and whoever I need to. I want to put into the contacts list. Um, there's a whole video that we did where you can actually have the app and add other people to it. Um, communicate. They can track you. All sorts of stuff. Check that out in the, in the playlist. Um, we'll add that to probably the must-have 
in my eyes um, just because we we plan on doing some of that in the near future. We want to go back to some point subline. We never did get to there because when we went there, the Bronco was not lifted first. Second, we did not have the tires for it, which the stock suspension and tires, everybody's going to say, hey, the, the Bronco Sport can't do what it wants to do. I beg to differ. This thing has been put through the test and put through everything. I can tell you right now, this is very capable of doing what you want it to do. Um, now, if you're looking to do a massive rock crawling and all that kind of stuff, you're probably right. It's probably not going to work very well. But that trip taught us a lot. That, that trip taught me to be a lot more prepared. That's kind of why I'm doing more of these videos. Um, I know a lot of people are looking at me why I'm doing the reviews, why we upgraded our pod lights and some other stuff. You know, we, we were approached by Lost Fit and they wanted to sponsor us on this and get some pod lights. They're actually going to be sending us a light bar too. And I'm going to be working with them on doing a giveaway for you guys. So if you guys are not part of the channel yet and you guys have not subscribed, make sure you guys do that down below because you guys might have a chance to win a 52-inch light bar. So, yeah. What else can we talk about? Um, not sure, but, you know, just get out there and go do it. Like, a lot of people are always asking me, what do you need? You don't really need any of this stuff. You guys can literally take what you guys have now and just go go have fun go enjoy the nature go get pestered by mosquitoes like we are out here great time down here i love it um we do plan on doing some changes um because i do plan on being down here a lot lot, lot more and spending a lot more time down here with my work um so me and my wife are kind of working through that um but i plan on maybe seeing if she can come down here for a little bit of time she can spend some time down here with us and we'll do some more trails, test out this stuff. We will actually finish the Blackwater River State Forest trail that we keep attending to, attempting to do. First time we didn't do it because we didn't have enough time. Second time, got rained out. Um, it was a lot worse that day that, than this here. This is actually not, not, not too terribly bad. bad. I, I would probably go do the trail if it stayed like this, um, but it's about 35 miles uh, north of here. That we have to go onto the trail so i don't know how that's going to uh pertain to where we're going but yeah just go out and have fun like you you guys can just use your car and go on some mild uh, very easy trails most cars can go on the trails that we go on um, we don't go on any difficult ones we just kind of keep it simple we want to show you guys you don't need a whole bunch to go out and go do stuff that's that's the biggest thing you don't need any of this stuff these are just my creature comforts because as I'm getting more into this and I'm doing more of this, I plan on um, plan on expanding this more and getting more into this, getting more hardcore into it and going further in where most remote where mo most vehicles will not be able to go. That's the goal for the Bronco, is to get her to the point that she can go a lot further. And we've been working with Ben from HRG. Um, he's got some stuff coming out and we actually have a couple prototypes I can't share with you guys yet because he's still working on them, but don't worry that stuff's coming and yeah, I think, I think it's going to be a great year for the rest of the year. We will be out of SEMA again this year. Make sure you guys check us out there. We'll be out there. We're not, we're not going to have a booth this year. We're just going to kind of go out there. Um, if you guys see us out there, make sure you stop us, say hi, um, tell us about some of your adventures. We want to hear about them. Um, we will be out oh, out at Overland Mountain West down in Colorado. So we are taking some carpet, some time off from there. We put in so that we can go there as well as Overland East out in uh, Virginia. We plan on going out there as well and checking out the scene and seeing what we can check out and see some of the other rigs and do some walk arounds. So hope you guys like the video. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. If you guys are existing, Thank you very much. We appreciate it. That's how we continue to push through and keep doing these videos. Um, see you guys next time. Peace.